Welcome to this section on deploying and managing infrastructure at scale. In this section, we'll see different ways to deploy your workloads onto AWS. And the first technology I want to talk about is CloudFormation. So CloudFormation is such an important technology in AWS because it is a declarative way of outlining your AWS infrastructure for any resources, and most of them are supported. So to give you a concrete example, in CloudFormation, you would say, I want a security group. I want two EC2 instances that will be using that security group. I also want an S3 bucket, and I want a load balancer in front of all these machines. Then CloudFormation automatically creates all these things for you in the right order with the exact configuration that you specify. So the benefits of using CloudFormation are multiple. But the first one is that all your infrastructure is as code. That means that you will never ever create resources manually like we've done in this course, which is excellent for control. And that means that any time you do a changes to how your AWS cloud is doing, then it needs to be reviewed through code review, which is a great way to operate in a cloud. On top of things, there is a cost advantage because each resource within the stack is going to get a tag that is going to be similar to all the other resources creating within the stack. And you can also easily estimate the cost of your resources using the CloudFormation template. And finally, thanks to CloudFormation, you can have a saving strategy. For example, you can say that in some environment, you could automate the deletion of all the templates at 5 p.m., which will delete all the associated resources with that template, and then recreate it at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. safely. And so therefore, you have cost savings because you don't have any resources between 5 p.m. and 8 a.m. With CloudFormation, it's super easy to create and delete resources, which is one of the biggest cloud principles. Then for productivity. So as I said, you're able to destroy and recreate the infrastructure on the fly. It's also generating diagrams for you for your templates, as we'll see very quickly. And there's declarative programming. So you don't need to figure out if you need to create a DynamoDB table first or an EC2 instance or all these things together. The CloudFormation template is smart enough to figure out how to do things. Finally, with CloudFormation, we don't reinvent the wheel. So that means that we can leverage existing templates on the web, we can leverage documentation, and CloudFormation supports almost all AWS resources. That means that everything we'll see in this course is supported by CloudFormation. And in case it isn't, you can use something called a custom resource for resources that are not supported. So CloudFormation really is the base of infrastructure as code on AWS. So as I said, you could see the CloudFormation visually to see a diagram of what is created. So I took an online WordPress CloudFormation stack, and then I went into the designer to see what it was giving me, and it gave me this diagram. So as we can see here, we can see the different components that are created. For example, we have security groups, we have an ALB listener, we have a launch configuration, a load balancer, a database instance for RDS, and an auto-scaling group. And CloudFormation is smart enough to create this diagram, but also create all the relationships between all these components, which is very handy. As we can see, we can see all the resources and their relations. So from an exam perspective, CloudFormation is going to be used when we have infrastructure as code, when we need to repeat an architecture in different environments, different regions, or even different AWS accounts. So that's it for me. I will see you in the next lecture for a short practice on CloudFormation.